Welcome to Flight Test. I'm Chad and today I'm going to talk to you about painting your scratch built airplanes. One of the first basic examples that we started with was spray paint, just regular spray paint from Walmart. But you need to be careful. You need to make sure that it's light coats and you have to keep the nozzle far away from the surface of the paper because if, it, if you saturate it or if the chemicals from the propellant get on the paper, it will actually warp it and, and cause it to ripple and will ruin your model. However, we found a really great trick uh, by some people on our forum and I think there was some YouTube and Facebook posts. People are talking about using Minwax to uh, coat this and so we tried it. Don't use the water base. Do not use the water base. Use the regular Minwax polyurethane. You coat the paper with Minwax and then wipe off the excess and the Minwax uh, polyurethane will actually soak into the paper and what it does is it leaves this really great uh, rigid waterproof coating. I strongly recommend first coating your plane in the Minwax polyurethane and then you can paint it with whatever you choose. You can even use a brush. Do keep in mind paint does add weight so if you're gonna add a thick coat of paint it is going to make your plane heavy. Um, one of the newer methods that we just discovered at the Harbor Freight, I think it was around $80 we were able to get an airbrush pump. And then the airbrush itself, you can get them as low as $50, but we wanted a little bit nicer one. I think this one was around $90. So you're, you're at almost a $200 investment about the time you get everything. And then the paint itself. Make sure you're getting airbrush paint. And we tried the cheap stuff and we tried the better stuff. The better airbrush paint does have more pigment. So that's definitely good because if it gets too thin, you end up having to layer it so much that it ends up getting your your model wet and takes a lot longer to coat it and doesn't look as nice so it is worthwhile spending a little more money on the on the nicer paint because it does have more pigment um, and then a little trick that David uh, learned online was using Windex he actually mixed the Windex into the paint I think they might actually recommend one-to-one -one, but I don't like on that that much. I, I do like maybe two parts paint to one part Windex. And what that does is it thins the paint out even a little more so it keeps uh, so you have less clogging, makes it easier to clean. It also makes the paint dry faster. So I even tried alcohol. I think the alcohol dries too quickly. Um, so the Windex for whatever reason seems to work really well. The plane that I first tried this on, the airbrush, was the Vigan. One of the things that's really nice is you can just cut some basic shapes. I took a straight edge piece from post board and I just misted the edge of it and faded it off there. It made it look like a control surface with just a little bit of weathering. This was my first attempt on some camouflage which I don't know on camera it might look okay. I was not pleased with it. On some of the lines here it just it's too soft and I was trying to do it with the airbrush and you know trying some air, airbrush techniques but I think ultimately I, I tried something else later. A much better method taking some masking tape and I just put it down on the table here. And then I take a razor blade or a razor knife and all you do is you just give your little arcs and curves. Boom, right there. Cutting masking tape and using that as a nice little guide is probably the best way to do it. And if you do put the, the polyurethane on your model, it'll keep the tape from pulling up the paper and it will protect your model. And the most important thing is testing anything that you're gonna try, any techniques. If you're only gonna paint one or two planes, probably the best investment would be to buy some polyurethane and then use the spray paint. Just to give you a few pointers, um, what I've learned about airbrushes, this is what's called a dual action airbrush, which I wouldn't recommend getting any other because it's not a lot more to get a dual action. Depending on how far you push down, it will vary the amount of airflow coming out. However, what controls the amount of paint coming out is sliding it back. So you push down and slide back. So pushing down, is the air pressure sliding back is how much paint comes out. Now another thing I wanted to talk about uh, with airbrushing is mixing paint. This is the little container that comes with the airbrush and you put it on there and that's what holds the paint while you're painting. Now if you happen to mix a paint color, say you want to mix olive drab you know, for a military scheme and you mix enough to fill this even all the way and you get halfway through your plane and you run out of paint now you've got to mix that color again and the chances of you getting the exact same color are very slim so what I recommend is make sure you mix a lot <laughs> mix more than you need uh, because it's better to have too much than not enough so what I did was I just got 
bunch of different colors, the primary colors, and then I have black and white too. And then uh, I used a water bottle and I would just add some color and I would mix it and add more and, until I got the color I wanted. And then to mix it, you just shake it up. And then I added the uh, uh, Windex to thin it out a little bit. So now I have a bunch of olive drab paint ready to go and it's mixed to the color that I like. And if I run out, I just pour more in and I'm good to go. So uh, definitely recommend mixing a separate bottle of the paint that you want to use and, and make sure you have plenty of it. Another nice thing about the airbrush is you don't have the paint fumes. Um, and now the paint itself does have a smell and you should probably always wear a respirator, but you can paint it inside your house, in your basement, whatever, where with a spray can you have to go outside because of the fumes. Um, so that's definitely uh, uh, a big plus to the airbrush. When I was painting with the airbrush, what I noticed was it's good to just get a feel for how it lays down the paint. So you always want to practice first. Practice on a piece of poster board or paper or, or whatever, but just get used to how the paint flows. That's really important. How much paint comes out and try to use the actual paint that you're going to paint with. Don't practice with one brand of paint and then paint with another because then it, it may be very different. Or if you have different mixtures, maybe you don't have the same mixture of uh, thinning a medium or, or Windex in your paint. When you first press the button on the airbrush, it will spatter sometimes. And you don't want that on whatever you're painting because it'll leave little little spatters that aren't pleasant. So that's one thing. You want to point it away, start it, and then go ahead and start painting. And that way you get the spatters out of the way and then you can paint and, and lay down your layers. You want to make sure that you paint in layers. Light mist coats are nice. You don't want to try to lay it down too thick. You want a nice even flow and you want to be able to uh, get an even coating on your surface. That's when it goes back to the type of paint you're using. The thicker pigment paint is always good because you'll use less coats and it will just cover more uniform. You get into too thin a paint and too thin a pigment and it really will probably cause a lot of frustrations because it'll take you twice as long to paint it and it still won't look as good. Something else you might want to look into is the, the kind of paint. You, they, they have opaque, transparent, flat, gloss. You can even get treatments to go over the paint so after you paint then you can add a gloss treatment. We haven't done that yet but I've noticed there's lots and lots of options at the craft store. Make sure if you are going to mask your plane and mask a design, make sure you lay down the lighter colors first and then put the darker colors down. The reason is if you lay a darker color down and you put the lighter color over it, it's always going to show through and there's going to be a, it's going to make your lighter color appear darker. All right, I hope what I had to say today was good. Uh, hopefully you guys were encouraged and inspired. I'd love for you guys to uh, paint your planes, post your pics. We love seeing what you guys do with your planes. Also, don't forget to check out our store. We're trying to add new items every week and uh, we thank you guys for sponsoring this episode because uh, it's because of you and buying stuff off our store we're able to keep uh, uh, bringing you episodes and uh, we enjoy it a lot so thanks guys and we'll see you later and thanks for joining us today and I'll see you later but check out our website and stuff stuff and stuff all right ready yeah okay well thanks for listening to me today <laughs> That's going to be loud, Ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs>